let's turn this piece of firewood into a live edge vase. Welcome back to the channel for another epic wood turning video. And yes, it will be pure wood turning, no resin involved. And just to give you a little bit of a history about this wood and why this is a salvaged firewood. So a couple of months ago, someone reached out to me on Instagram. And this guy was fairly local to me. He's also doing some uh, wood carving in his yard. And he's got um, a local contact who's a tree surgeon. So had uh, plenty of nice uh, logs and woods available in his yard. So I went there, have a look at it. And uh, yeah, plenty of nice balls. I was able to pick up including this piece. It is always a great feeling to pick up nice wood, especially if the wood originally was destined to be firewood. So I'm glad that I was able to give a second life to this piece of wood. So after trimming the piece on my band saw, now ready to glue and using my 5 minutes epoxy resin to glue my waste block before I can mount this on later. And as you can see, I fairly off-centered the piece um, and there is a purpose behind it so my plan is to retain as much as live edge and and burl on the side as possible and hopefully i will end up with a piece which is kind of half and half and um with a bit of live edge at the top as well so we'll see to shape this log into a vase i will be using my half inch ball gauge this is a super versatile tool and while it does say is a ball gauge you can use it for many different applications if I could only choose one traditional tool in my arsenal, definitely it would be a ball gauge. As I shared before many times, I look at the top side of the turning and as you can see here, gently carving away the wood, which gives you the uh, a better insight how the shape is coming along, rather than looking at the actual cutting edge. While the piece is so off balance, I normally go around uh, 3 to 400 RPM and um, as it gets into a more run shape as you can see now i bumped up to around 800 to 900 and i won't really go any faster than 8 to 900 as well and i purposefully left this uh, footage in this edit i'm a left-handed turner and i switched hands this time and you can see how uneven and wobbly my cut so now i have to switch over to a pull cut instead of using my push cut and the reason I switched hands, just because of the camera positioning and the the angle I needed to switch uh, hands and I think it was just um, a very good eye opener how important it is to have the right tool positioning and using your stronger hand. Because here I'm doing the same cut by using my left hand to maneuver the cutting edge and it cuts perfectly. Once we have the desired shape, I just switched over to my skew chisel and this will remove some of the uh, tool marks from the ball gauge. And this is a super satisfying moment. As you can see, all the vertical lines are slowly getting carved away and this only means less sanding to come. Then just a little clean up with my uh, Dremel tool. I didn't have the right attachment and um, this was just a, a soft fiber kind of attachment. Uh, but he still did a really good job to get into the tight um, corners and doors and getting some of the dirt out. As most of the tool marks were removed with the skew chisel, um, very little sand handling was needed and took this piece all the way to 240 grit. Here I will be using a set of different Forstner bits ranging from 30mm all the way to 50mm to help with coring the inside of this piece. Then switching over to a carbide chisel which I found works really well on end grain turnings and also works really well on tougher wood like those. However, due to the size of the projects and uh, the depth I need to go in, I was getting a low vibration 
So it was time to switch over to my big boy Halloween chisel. And look at the size. That's a normal size on the right hand side. And on the left hand side, that's my giant deep hollower. And excuse the shaky footage, but this is when the tripod touched the late stand. It just transfers the vibration onto the camera. Again, filming on the inside of uh, Hollowinger Base is rather difficult, getting the light, getting the right camera angle and and also for me to see the actual cutting edge and here trying to do everything in the same time and my lights just fell off. So um, I couldn't really film the entire Hollowing process. But once the Hollowing was done, I just went in with the negative brake scraper. And no, this tool is not upside down. I get a lot of comments about this tool, what I'm using up upside down, but this actually how it's uh, intended to be uh, used. And it works really well again, removing some of the uh, leftover marks. So I repeated this process a few more times and then I was ready to go over and start doing some um, sanding and again just like the outside I was sanding the inside all the way till 240 grit. And after some sanding, this piece was ready to come off from the lathe. And here I'm just creating a little rondo with um, spindle guard. Then just a touch of sanding and the piece is ready to come off. So hopefully you enjoyed this week's project video. I have plenty of awesome projects lined up for the coming weeks and months. But please, if you have any good idea, what would you like to see on this channel? Let me know and I certainly will add this onto my to-do list. Because I create content for your entertainment, not really for mine. So whatever pleases the audience, that's what I would love to make. So let me know what would you like to see and I will try to incorporate into my future projects. And here I will be using Rubio Monocourt's a pure finish and this is a two part finish and once you carefully measure part A and then the accelerator part B and you gently mix A and B together it will give you a super durable and food safe finish. But the reason I love this so much because it smells so good. Rather difficult to describe the smell, but compared to linseed oil or um, or Danish oil, this one is a different league. So thank you for watching and see you back next week.